plaintiff, Daryl Pickens, became friends with the defendant in fifth grade. But while the defendant went off to college, Daryl went down the wrong path and got addicted to PCP. Daryl claims he rented a house to the defendant, but he failed to pay rent, so he's suing. Defendant Alan Chris Edson says he stopped paying rent because Daryl refused to make necessary repairs on the home. In retaliation, Chris claims Daryl cursed him out, and he believes Daryl also slashed his tires, so he's countersuing. Start with you. I met Chris in fifth grade. So all the way through high school, we were best buddies. Chris went to college. I didn't go to college. I wasn't. So, but anyway, I got a job, got to hanging out, smoking weed and stuff. So my life took a negative road. Someone passed me a PCP joint, and I thought it was weed. And I How old were you? 22. And at that point in my life, I became instantly addicted to PCP. Smoking this sherm. Yeah, 40 years of my life, I was in and out of jail, trouble. 40. 40 years, in and out of jail. So when I last got... PCP for 40 years, you lose your mind. That's why you have to ask God, and I don't know why, why okay. I'm here. So when I last got out of jail in November of 2013, my mom informed me she had breast cancer. So for some reason, at that point in my life, I understood that life was really real. So I committed myself for the rest of her life, I was going to be clean. So I've been clean every, every day since. Good. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's what it takes. So, That's what turned my life around from a violent street youth to going to college. Right before my mother died, I went to college. Um, and she saw me in college for the first two months, then she passed. Mm -hmm. But eight months before that, she saw me in jail and said, change your life, please, before I die. Because wow. she had cancer. So you are like, do it. If well, nothing changes, that will. The last time I went to jail, my mom wouldn't speak to me or anything. Be before, she'd bring money and everything. But that last time I went, I knew she wasn't playing no more. See, my mother was the opposite. She would never come. Really? I probably went to juvenile four or five times. She would never come pick me up. My dad Either they have to know. wait until whatever, or my bond get low enough, and my little buddy's friends would come and get me. Uh -huh. Or they'd let me go because I didn't do it most of the, many of the times. <laughs> and so they <laughs> couldn't hold me, and so they just let me out after a day or two. But she would never come. And the one time she did come, I was surprised and I was in the adult county jail uh -huh. and had been there for nine months. She came to visit and told me how she, doctors just told her she was dying of cancer. And nine months later, I was in college. Wow. So if that don't wow. work, nothing nothing else will. Yeah, for sure. Congrats. Where's your mom now? She passed. Mm -hmm. She passed a year later. Oh. So I gave her that, that last year clean. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she left here without having a what worry about me but with her up there she watches me everywhere I go now so I can't leave and she don't know that crazy stuff I'm doing so I can't do it no more. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you. And your friend your friendship with your buddy we moved to California when I was in the fifth grade okay. and he was my best buddy. I met Chris in fifth grade. So all the way through high school we were best buddies. So Chris went to college, my life took a negative road. Someone passed me a PCP joint, and at that point in my life, I became instantly addicted to PCP. Smoking this shirt. Plaintiff Daryl Pickens is suing his former friend, who believes Daryl slashed his tires after a dispute over rent. And what type of friendship have you all maintained? Well, a couple years ago, we reconnected. We were at the uh, city family center. And uh, he, he informed me that her mom, his mom was moving to North Carolina. She was going to sell the house, and he was going to look for some place to stay. So I informed him I had a house, and the tenants, I really wasn't sat satisfied with them. So I told him if he could pay me $1,500 a month, that I would put them out, and he could move in. What type of place was it? A two-and-a-half-bedroom house. The good price. What city are you all in? Los Angeles, you said? Yeah, it, it's in Pasadena. That's even a better price, fifteen hundred. No, no, yeah. Well, I was getting more, but because right. that, that's it's my buddy. Price. And was it going to be for a year or just a month? Till whenever. Month? Till whenever. That's you a want month it. to month. Yeah, All month right, go month. ahead. So as Daryl indicated, uh, you know, he and I were friends since fifth grade through high school. 
Uh, he got to show off your little college in here because he said he didn't go and you did. Uh, as Errol has indicated, uh, <laughs> the, the square root of five times eight is does us uh, get to the case. I'm already impressed. He said it. You're happy. You're suited up. Yeah. You look distinguished. Thank you. Now let's get back down to South <laughs> LA where you come from. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, Daryl and I had been separated for 40 years, basically. And uh, Daryl told me about the things he had been involved in, that he had been to prison, that he was addicted to PCP. Uh, and uh, this wasn't the guy that I re had remembered. When did uh, you all separate? At what grade? 1971. What grade was that? Uh, 12th grade, after high okay. school. Okay, got it. Uh, so after that, um, uh, you know, we uh, reconnected at a friend's mother's funeral. And, uh, you know, our paths crossed from time to time, and Daryl would fill me into stories about how he supported his drug habit by stealing. Uh, he even shared a story with me where he went to a store one day. The store manager met him at the door and said, you can't come in this store because you're Daryl Pickens. Banned <laughs> from the store. That was and, bad. And, um, <laughs> you know, he told me, you know, how he did little devious things to people that, uh, you know, weren't on the right side of him, um, putting sugar in the gas tank, throwing bricks through windows. Even he had previous tenants in his uh, house where he, uh, if they didn't pay rent, they'd just take his, he'd take their stuff and throw it out inside. Um, so and, uh, I moved and, in. And it, after hearing all that, you moved in. That's what you're about <laughs> to tell me. After hearing that he threw the tenant's things out, not only did you move in, you didn't pay your rent. Go well, ahead. So we, I'm sure uh, he threw your things out, and we'll get to that shortly. I don't know, know as, but I um, assume. You know, I moved in. And uh, shortly thereafter, a couple of windows were broken. I told Daryl that I was going to stop paying rent until he fixed the window. Window. How were they broken? Uh, just something, neighbor kids or something like that. You didn't uh, have anything to do with it. I didn't have anything to do with okay. it. Okay. He believed uh, you didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I quit paying rent, and then Daryl started uh, retaliating by you doing. You paid a, no rent. Not because after of the two uh, broken windows. Not after. The it was uninhabitable? Broken. You didn't stay there? Well, you know, despite popular demand, uh, California gets pretty cold in the winter. And, uh, so you didn't stay there? I stayed there. So it was habitable? Yes. So why didn't you just pay most of your rent and determine that you're going to withhold what might represent repaired windows? Because that's not what I told Daryl I was going to do. How were you able to stay there? Kindness of my friend. No, I'm saying with the windows broken. I was just cold. Okay, good enough. And for that cold, you, you don't want to pay a dime? You just want to live there scot-free? Uh, no. Okay, good, as long as you understand that. Yeah. All right, because you deduct uh -huh. a portion of it or you withhold a portion, something that is equal value to the inconvenience. All of the rent was not equal value to two windows that uh, were in disrepair. And did he tell you that, sir? Yes, he told me that, but at that point, it was like two weeks after he hadn't paid the rent, so I'm like, well, here, here we go again. Here we go again what? I didn't say, you know, you know, tenants, with, with the tenant law, they can tell you anything and they can stay in, in your house for three to six months and they don't have to pay you nothing. Well, my brother ain't paid me in 18 years. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, so, so at that point, he's my buddy. Normally, I, I would have, like you said, I would have went up there, water holes and stuff mm -hmm. up. So what did you do? So I, I was just calling Maku, so I said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till the next month's rent, two weeks later, mm -hmm. and asking for the rent. Did, what did he say then? He said, I flattened his tires. Where did he get that impression or understanding or knowledge? You have to ask him, sir. sir. What happened? He says you didn't pay your next well, uh, I went month's out rent one because morning, you had a new excuse. And uh, my tires were flattened. You went and, outside and you saw your tires flattened? Yes. And, and you know, based on some of the stories uh, that Daryl had shared with me in his past uh, as being a hoodlum and a thug, uh, it was consistent with Daryl's behavior. And, and so I told him, you know, I would uh, cease paying rent. Okay. Did you call the police? No. Oh, okay. So you didn't believe he did it, or you didn't mind, at the very least. Plaintiff Daryl Pickens is suing his former friend, who believes Daryl slashed his tires after a dispute over rent. If you didn't call the police, somebody slashes your tires, that's a criminal act against you, you're scared of him already, remember he does all these bad things. 
So if you thought he'd done it, you certainly should have been scared based on, as you say, his history that you believe uh, he has uh, uh, been influenced by and has not changed. Uh, so counterclaim $3,551. How does he owe you for tires and emotional distress? Well, anytime the Daryl would come to the house, you know, he would uh, rip me up and down, you know, with curse words. You know, I was all types of <laughs> I was all kinds of N-words. I was this, I was that, you know, I almost assumed the identity of being <laughs> and thought that uh, was your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so... You walking down the street, somebody curse and say that, you look back. <laughs> <laughs> you say, what you want? So, you know, as Daryl, you know, w w would berate me, uh, you know, little things would happen again, like my tires. And, and so, you know, this is called a, uh, caused a real big... So you should have went to the police or uh, otherwise I can't conclude that you took it that serious or that you were convinced it was him. You speculated that it might have been him, but you were so unsure that you didn't even uh, think to file a police report. Because certainly a report, even if you're not going to pursue it, uh, you would file a report as people do with accidents. Even though they might not pursue suing the person, they get a report in case they want to give it to their insurance company. They may not tell the uh, police, I want to press charges, but they take a report. Um, people have disputes. They uh, may not go to the police and press charges, but they make a report. You didn't even do the very least, sir. So I'm not convinced that uh, your reaction indicated that you believed he did them uh, based on his past. With regard to the rent, you paid zero for three months because of two windows, or were there other items in disrepair? The uh, water heater was turned off. Okay. How long? Uh, for the duration of my stay there, after when the first two... After uh, the, the water after what? The, after first the first two, two months? months? Yes. And when you asked about it, what did he tell you? This. That. All right, you shouldn't have had a problem. By the end, you knew that was your name. So what did you say? <laughs> you just well, said, huh? And, and I, I responded in kind. <laughs> All right. And was the water turned off? If so, why? No. When I... After he moved out, it's like, I don't know where he said, I, okay, I didn't... you did not turn the water off? No, I did off. not turn the water I didn't even pressure him to move. Did I he ask you move. about the water being turned off? Yes, he asked How did him. you respond? Did you check I and told see him, that whether no, that was the case? No, I didn't even go up there because I knew he, he just... You didn't go and check on me. it? No. Okay, good enough. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, that's it, Your Honor. All right. Did you ever fix the two windows? Okay. After, after he left, yes. I got it. I got you. I got you. And <laughs> that's why you're only going to get... That's why you're getting $3,000, sir, instead of the $4,500. I'm going to abate the rent by $1,500. You knew that he had no water, and you still uh, uh, think you're going to get paid for that. You knew that the windows were broken, and you still didn't go and fix them. In fact, you didn't fix them until he moved. You're lucky you're getting $3,000. Uh, have a good day. $3,000 is your judgment. <laughs> And yours dismissed, my friend. I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> uh, it was an interesting experience, to say the least. And I I've learned some things that I should do in the future, if that happens again.